عبادك الأيام فتا وتنح الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد This inshallah ta'ala is our second set on our fawaid benefits um, Inshallah ta'ala as I said before and I'm going to repeat now as well is these are only series of fawaid benefits which I took from books um, Inshallah ta'ala and as I said also before that it varies it could be from any topic it could be about nahu it could be about usul al-tafsir it could be qawaid al-fiqiyah it could be usul al-fiqh it could be mustalah al-hadith it could be uh, it could be anything in the Sharia. Wherever I feel like there's a, this is a mas'ala which is a, of benefit, inshallah ta'ala, um, I will be idhni lahil kareem uh, make it the benefit of that day. Inshallah ta'ala, today's fa'ida, inshallah ta'ala, is going to be khuturatu man yata'awwalu al-Qur'ana bi jahlin anis sunnah. The danger of the one who comments on the Qur'an or who gives the tafsir of the Qur'an whilst he is ignorant of the sunnah. So he's basically speaking about the tafsir of the Qur'an, but he is ignorant of the sunnah of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Here with me I have the kitab by Ibn Abdul Barr, Jami' Bayan al-Ilmi wa Fadli, the second volume, Dar ibn al-Jawzi, the tahqiq of Abu al-Ashbal, um, page 336. Ibn Abdul Barr says, um, Rahimahullah, and Imam Ibn Abdul Barr, my beloved brothers and sisters, is he is called Hafiz al Maghrib. At his time, there were two noble Hufad, there were two noble Hafiz. One was the Hafiz of Maghrib, and the other one was Hafiz of Mashriq. Hafiz of Maghrib was who? Ibn Abdul Barr. And the Hafiz of Mashriq was who? Khatib al-Baghdadi. So they were both contemporaries. Ibn Abdul Barr, Abu Umar Ibn Abdul Barr, Rahimahullah, he said, Ahlul Bida' the people of innovation, Ajma, all of them, Adrabu an is Sunnah, Wata'awalu al Kitaba ala Gayri ma bayanat is Sunnah, Fadalu wa Adalu. Ibn Abdul Barr said, that the innovators, all of them, they turned away from the Sunnah and they commented on the Quran based on ala ghayri ma bayyanat sunnah They commented and they explained the Quran opposite to that which the Sunnah mentioned. Fadallu, they became misguided, and wa adallu, they misguided others. So they became misguided and they also misguided others. Ibn Abdul Barr goes on to say, "When Billahi, we seek refuge in Allah, min al khudlani, we seek refuge from Allah Tabarak wa Taala from humiliation. When asaluhu tawfiq, and we ask Allah to give us tawfiq, wal ismata bi rahmatihi, and that Allah protects us from shortcomings with His mercy." So Ibn Abdul Barr here tells us that it's a unanimously, wherever you go, you will always find the Ahlul Bid'ah. They won't result to the Sunnah. When it comes to the commentary of the Quran, rather they comment on the Quran in opposition towards the Sunnah. Ibn Abdul Barr, after he brought that, or he said that statement, Rahimahullah, after he said that, he said, وَقَدْ رُوِيَ عَنِ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ He said it was transmitted from the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم التَّحْذِيرُ عَنْ ذَلِكَ فِي غَيْرِ مَا أَثَرٍ مِنْهَا التَّحْذِيرُ عَنْ ذَلِكَ فِي غَيْرِ مَا أَثَرٍ He said that it has been narrated from the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم warning about this matter which is to oppose the Sunnah and to explain the Qur'an <coughs> in opposition to the Sunnah. Narrations have come from the Prophet ﷺ regarding this, more than one. فِي غَيْرِ مَا أَثَرْ مِنْهَا From them is. And so Ibn Abdul Barr, from his chain of narration, 
to the companion Uqbat ibn Amir al-Juhani. He brought his chain of narration to Uqbat ibn Amir al-Juhani. He said that Uqba said, Samitu I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul. I heard the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Halaku ummati. The Prophet said, The destruction of my ummah is in fil kitabi in the Quran. Wallabani and the milk. The ummah's destruction is inside what? The kitab meaning the Quran and the laban, the milk. Faqila, it was then said to the messenger, Ya Rasulullah, O messenger of Allah, mal kitabu wal laban. What is the book? And what is the milk? Then the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Yata'allamun al-Qur'an, they learn the Qur'an. Wa yata'awwalunahu. And they interpret and they explain the Quran ala ghayri ma anzalahu Allah azza wa jalla. They comment on the Quran in a way which Allah has not sent it down for. Or they go with a meaning in which Allah did not want for it. Or Allah did not send it down on that meaning. وَيُحِبُّونَ And they love اللبنة, They love the milk. فَيَدَعُونَ الْجَمَاعَاتِ So they leave the congregations. وَالْجُمَعَ And they leave the Friday sermon. وَيُبْدُونَ And so they go to what? So they go to the livestock. The يُبْدُونَ They become Bedouins. They leave the, uh, where the masajids and everything are. And they go to places outside the city where there's no masjids. And they only go there to drink milk. This hadith, its sanad is Hassan. Imam Muhammad narrated it. Abu Ya'la and At-Tabarani and its sanad is Hassan. So where do we benefit from these brothers? That the Quran, if it's explained in other than that which Allah meant by it, then the destruction of the Ummah is in it. Can you not see those who are making the Quran a source to kill others? قال الله تعالى And they are a kafir. And so he kills you. So the Quran, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he says something and he means something and they're two different things. If somebody comes up to you today and says to you, did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la taqrabu salah. Oh, those of you who believe in Allah, don't get close to the prayer. And I stop there. If I ask you, did Allah say that? What would you say? Yes. Then you can't say no. So Allah did say, oh, those of you who believe, don't come close to the prayer. Allah said it. But is that what Allah meant? It is that what Allah meant? La. That is not what Allah meant. So the destruction here, brothers, is that you're taking the meaning to not to up to diff, uh, in opposition to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant. And the Sunnah is the one who knows what Allah meant. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Allah said in the Quran, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ Oh Muhammad, we send the Quran on you. Allah said, we send the Quran on you. Why did we send the Quran on you? لِتُبَيِّنَ لِكَيْ So you can clarify to the people the Quran. You are the one that was meant to clarify for them. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Ibn Abdul Bar, after that, he brings another hadith from the Messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <coughs> this hadith is also authentic. Imam Ahmad narrated Bazar ibn Battah in his Ibana that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Akhwafu ma akhafu ala ummati. The one that I fear the most for my ummah is Munafiq, a hypocrite. Alimul lisan, who is eloquent. Silver-tongued, who can sell a sand to an Arab. Yujadil bil Quran, and he argues on the with the Quran. His argument is the Quran. The Prophet is saying, "I fear my ummah for a munafiq, eloquent." And if he argues and he puts a matter forward, he will use the statement of Allah. But why, brothers? 
he won't bring it back to the sunnah. He won't bring it back to the sunnah. Ibn Abdul Bar, he brought the statement of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. That Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, all of this is in his book, Jami'u Bayani al-Ilmi wa Fadli, which I'm reading it from. That Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, إِنَّمَا أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ رَجُلَيْنِ I fear for you guys two men. Two types of people is what I fear for you. Umar is saying this. I fear for you two types of people. The first one is رَجُلٌ A individual. تَأَوَّلَ الْقُرْآنِ A person who explains the Qur'an عَلَى غَيْرِ تَأْوِيلِهِ A person who explains the Qur'an but not in its correct explanation. The first one. Umar is saying, I fear this for you. The second one is وَرَجُلٌ A individual يُنَافِسُ الْمُلْكَ who's running after leadership عَلَى أَخِيهِ on his brother. He's competing with his brother over leadership. And if it leads to bloodshed, he will spill blood. So the statement of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu here, which is the first part, is an individual who comments on the Qur'an, and he's commenting on the Qur'an is what? It is not the correct explanation of it. The next, inshallah ta'ala, statement that I'm going to bring you all is, a statement said by uh, a statement said by uh, Ibn Abdul Hadi, the author of the book Asarim al Munki fi Raddi al Subki. Asarim al Munki fi Raddi al Subki. Ibn Abdul Hadi, in this book of his, who is Ibn Abdul Hadi first? Ibn Abdul Hadi is the individual who Abu al Hajjaj al Mizi, Sahib al Tahdib al Kamal. The author of the book Tahdib al Kamal Abu al Hajjaj al Mizi, who you should all know, Abu al Hajjaj al Mizi. Abu al Hajjaj al Mizi said, Ibn Abdul Hadi never entered onto me, he never came to me, illa wastafattu minhu, except I benefited from him. Abu al Hajjaj al Mizi was a contempt, he was a contemporary of Imam Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, and Ibn Abdul Hadi. Ibn Abdul Hadi was a contemporary or was a friend of Ibn Kathir rahimahullah. Ibn Abdul Hadi he and Ibn Kathir both used to, both used to go to Abu al-Hajjaj al-Mizi and take knowledge from him. So he's a noble scholar. He died at the age of 38 and if he lived he would have come out with a lot of amazement. 30 years, 38 years of age. Abu uh, Ibn Abdul Hadi, he said in his book, Asarim al Munki, a powerful statement. He said, وَلَا يَجُوزُ إِحْدَاثُ تَأْوِيلٍ فِي آيَةٍ أَوْ سُنَّةٍ لَمْ يَكُنْ عَلَىٰ, أح- أ- لم يكن على عَهْدِ السَّلَفِ وَلَا عَرَفُوهُ وَلَا بَيَّنُوهُ لِلْأُمَّةِ فَإِنَّ هَذَا يَتَضَمَّنُ أَنَّهُمْ جَهِلُوا الْحَقَّ فِي هَذَا وَضَلُّوا عَنُهُ وَاهْتَدَى إِلَيْهِ هَذَا الْمُعْتَرِضُ الْمُسْتَأْخِرُ فَكَيْفَ إِذَا كَانَ التَّأْوِيلُ يُخَالِفُ تَأْوِيلَهُمْ وَيُنَاقِضُهُ Ibn Abd al-Hadi, he said, وَلَا يَجُوزُ It is not permissible to introduce an explanation of the Qur'an, to introduce a commentary of the Qur'an. فِي آيَةٍ in a verse, أو سنة or in the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم السنة, it is not permissible. That which لم يكن على عهد السلفي, that which was not at the time of the pious predecessors, this explanation was not at the time of the you go to Surah, to Surah Al-Asr and you go to Nu'man Ali Khan's explanation of Surah Al-Asr if you go to it you will see the commentary and the explanation he puts on it لم يقول به أحد من أئمة السلف no one from the Salaf of this Ummah have ever said this ولا يجوز it is not permissible إحداث تأويل for you to introduce an explanation on a verse or a Sunnah لم يكن it was not known على أهد السلف it, it was not known at the time of the Salaf ولا عرفوه and they, the Salaf didn't even know it ولا بيّنوه and they never explained it to be to mean that meaning للأمة for the Ummah because look at this statement because if you do come with a, a different explanation if you come with it and you put it to the table and you introduce it what does that mean 
that the Salaf were ignorant about this haq that you're guided to. وَضَلُّوا عَنْهُ and they were misguided from it. وَاهْتَدَى إِلَيْهِ and who became guided to it? هَذَا الْمُعْتَرِضُ This individual who is now commenting on it, he's the one who's been introduced to it. الْمُسْتَعْخِرُ فَكَيْفَ That's, brothers, that's somebody who is what? Who is introducing something that they never said. Imagine. فَكَيْفَ Ibn Abdul Hadi is saying, فَكَيْفَ Then what would the issue be? إِذَا كَانَ التَّأْوِيلُ يُخَالِفُ تَأْوِيلَهُمْ if your ta'wil, your explanation of the ayah is actually in uh, opposition towards their explanation. It's even worse. I'm going to finally conclude with Abu Ja'far ibn Jarir al-Tabari. Ibn Jarir al-Tabari. Who is he? He's Imam al-Mufassirin. Ibn Jarir is who? Imam al-Mufassirin. Ibn Jarir al-Tabari when it came to the ayah in Surah Al-A'raf, the ayah in Surah Al-A'raf, تِلْكَ الْقُرَى نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَائِهَا وَلَقَدْ جَاءَتْهُمْ رُسُولُهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ فَمَا كَانُوا لِيُؤْمِنُوا بِمَا كَذَّبُوا مِنْ قَبْلِ Allah says, كَذَلِكَ يَطْبَعُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِ الْكَافِرِينَ That ayah, Ibn Jarir al-Tabari commented on it. And this is what he said, it's the ayah in Surah Al-A'raf, ayah 101. Ibn Jarir al-Tabari said, وَلَوْ قِيلَ تَأْوِيلُ If it was said that the commentary or the explanation of this ayah means this, if I was to say, فَمَا كَانَ هَؤُلَاءِ الَّذِينَ They, those who are mentioned in the ayah, الَّذِينَ وَرِثْ فَمَا كَانَ هَؤُلَاءِ I mean Muhammad, the Prophet, Allah is talking to the Prophet, O Muhammad, these ones, هَؤُلَاءِ الَّذِينَ وَرِثُ الْأَرْضِ who inherited this earth, يَا مُحَمَّدْ O Muhammad, مِنْ مُشْرِكِ قَوْمِكَ from the pagans of your people. Min ba'di ahliha, after its people. Alladheena kanu biha, after those people who are on it, such as bin Adin wa Thamud, like the people of Ad and Thamud. Li yu'minu, they weren't those who were to believe. Bima kathaba bihi alladheena warithu anhum. They are not to believe that which was disbelieved by those who they inherited it from. Min tawheedillahi, from the oneness of Allah. وَوَعْدِهِ and the promise of Allah. وَوَعِيدِهِ and the warnings of Allah. Ibn Jarir Tabari, after he put that comment, guess what he said? He said, كَانَ وَجْهًا وَمَذْهَبًا That explanation I gave would have a face. It would be valid. And it would be a madhab if I said that. But I'm not. غَيْرَ أَنِّي لَا أَعْلَمُ قَائِلًا قَالَهُ Except I don't know anyone who said this before me. مِمَّنْ يُعْتَمَدُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمِهِ I don't know anyone who said this from the ulama of tafsir whose statement can be held onto from the Aimmat al-Tafsir. I haven't seen anyone who said this. مِمَّنْ يُعْتَمَدُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمِ بِتَأْوِيلِ الْقُرْآنِ Those whose commentary and explanation on the Qur'an, who it can be held onto. I haven't seen anybody who, I haven't seen anybody who said this. Allahu Akbar. When he himself, if he says this, he's Ibn Jadid al-Tabr, and we'll take it from him, because he's from the Aimmat al-Salaf. But it shows you what? Within the Salaf themselves, they looked at those who came before them to be the ones that they take from. And so it is not permissible, brothers, to comment on the Qur'an with ignorance and lack of knowledge of the Sunnah of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I will conclude there. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka atubu ilayhi.